How's that guys? Megan Ryan JSC and welcome to your potential, a channel dedicated towards your overall development regarding your mental health, spiritual well-being, and uh, <laughs> and your physical health. Today we're focusing on diet, more specifically veganism. Okay, a lot of you guys wanted to know how it was that I got started. I'm not going to tell you that very long, drawn-out story, but I will tell you how you can get started. And today, if you want, really you can start whenever you like. It just helps if you know exactly what to do first, because then at least you're not wasting your time sitting around thinking about what you have to lose, which really is nothing as long as you know exactly what you're doing, okay? I've never had to miss out on ice cream, lasagna, pasta, okay? I didn't miss out on any of that because I found a way to basically recreate the things I loved, but I made them taste better. That's, that's one of the many things that nobody seems to be able to honest, or even believe. You know, how can you make lasagna out of nothing but vegetables raw, which tastes better than the lasagna that my mum makes, or your mum makes, their mum makes, and it comes out of the oven piping hot. Trust me, you can, you can. <laughs> but first you need to know some basics. You're already well adept with specific flavors, textures, and tastes. Tastes which make your face contract because they're sour, ones that make your throat tense up because they're salty. You know, because you're trying to lick all the salt out of your mouth, maybe you've had too much salt on your chips. And ones which, well, just taste sweet. They're addictive. Sweet tastes tend to make you uh, well, a child again. But they also tend to make you sneak back downstairs for more. Sweet ice creams, uh, chocolates, anything that has a stupid amount of sugar in, you'll come back to. Donuts, okay? You're not actually addicted to the ice cream and the donuts. Or whatever else you have that has a bucket load of sugar in, okay? You're addicted to the sensation that sweet foods give the body. They tantalize your taste buds in a specific way. So, make a note of these, okay? As long as you can make a dish, and sometimes when I started off, I just made a dish that had all of these included, okay, all of these, that has you know, sour, sweets, or salts, you're fine. If you're able to make a dish every day of the week, or dishes throughout every day of the week. So in the morning, you can have something that's sweet, in the afternoon, something that's sour, with a little bit of saltiness to it. Every day, you'll be fine, okay? You'll be able to stay vegan for the rest of your life, as long as you know those specific things. But after a while, it kinda gets boring. That is when these next textures come into play, and that is crunchy, soft, and wet. If you can portion out your meals with those specific food textures, you'll be golden, okay? So, you can also go in between. For example, you can have something that's wet, be that the drink, coconut water. And on the dish, you can have something that's moist, so wet, yet soft. There's that texture in this plate, soft and wet. So, for example, if you had a plate which had on it the pulp left over from juicing some raw sweet potatoes. That pulp is soft, yeah? Add yourself some ripe avocados within that mash with some sweet corn, if you still eat sweet corn, or maybe some diced up bell peppers. Now you've got the sweet, you've got the soft, it's a little moist, so there's the wetness playing in. The avocado will also lend to that moisture within that particular food. Then what you do, you squeeze on it a bit of lime, if you like, with a little bit of salt. Now you've got the sweet, and you've got the salt, you know, and you've also got the bitter. All into one little food that's just on that side of the plate. You can go overboard, if you like, with flavors when it comes to organic spices. Ones that you're used to having on the foods that you already loved. Okay, that's very important. Because I found out within my transition, that I didn't like chicken, because if you have chicken on its own, it's just dry, it's chewy, and it just tastes boring. But if you add specific things on 
the chicken, maybe some rosemary, some thyme, some paprika, some chilies, marinate it in some cold pressed oil with some olives, all of a sudden, that chicken tastes brilliant, okay? Add all of those extras onto something else, rice, for example, wild rice that you soak. All of a sudden, you've got something that tastes like chicken, because in your mind, you're used to thinking that chicken tastes like a series of things, be that the herbs and the oils. Now, there's a myth going around, which has always been going around, and that is that being vegan is more expensive. At the beginning, it may seem that way, but once you level out, you're fine. Okay, now, this is why. At the beginning, you need to buy some things. You need to buy a blender. If you're getting really into health, you may need to buy a water distiller. You may need to buy juice press, dehydrator, and some other things when it comes to you investing in your health. Now, this is, this is where you really need to put two and two together, okay? Your mum, if you're, you're probably a teen watching this, being a teenager, you know, you just, you're used to going downstairs and using the equipment that's already laid out in front of you, which you didn't have to pay for. So when you transition and now you have to pay for these new things, it may seem as if you're spending a lot of money, but your parents spent money on a cooker, okay? They spent money on toasters, microwaves. They spent money on all these other electrical appliances or gas appliances, which they use in order to make you food. These cost just as much, if not more than, the stuff that I have here. All that's happening is now you're taking responsibility for the things that you're using to make your food. That is it. And that's why I'm saying that it may seem like you're spending a lot at the beginning, because usually you're not used to spending anything at all on food appliances. You know, knives and utensils and so forth. When it comes to the amount of food that you can buy on a vegan diet, you're not spending more money as long as you know where to buy the food from. When I went over to the Bahamas, it's at the bottom of the US, okay? All of the food in specific stores were way overpriced and they did that because they know that you're not gonna make it yourself. Here in the UK, you can make the same food for next to nothing. You can do that in the USA too, and anywhere else in the world, actually, as long as you know what to do. You buy the stuff in bulk. I buy all my foods in bulk. I have a delivery service that delivers to me my organic produce. I also buy my nuts in bulk. <laughs> my... <laughs> See, sunflower seeds. I paid for all of the jars that I put all of my stuff in. Don't leave it in the plastic because the plastic containers have a tendency to corrode and to corrupt your food produce, okay? So if you can, again, it goes into buying all of your stuff, buy a bunch of jars, and I have quite a few back there and some scattered around the house. Buy simple foods, okay, simple foods, and make the foods yourself. Most of the foods that you buy on an ordinary average diet they're already chopped up and made, you know, chicken tikka masala or other things that you buy from, I don't know, anywhere, McDonald's, Subway, you name it. But if you're looking in Subway, they've got all of the foods simplified first, then they put them together. Once they put everything together, the price goes up. So if you start taking responsibility in making your own food, you spend way less. Not only that, but because you start buying in bulk, you have not only spent less on all of the ingredients, but you can make the same thing 20 times over and still, you know, be saving money. Now, this does take time and effort and creativity. You cannot be a lazy person and just expect to transition easily because it's not really going to happen. To transition, you need to play with your hands. You need to get very creative. You need to learn how to deal with food, you know, having some kind of skill set in cooking will greatly help in your transition. And then, as you become weaned off of old foods that you used to eat, you become more of a, a mono food eater. You just eat the food as it is rather than chopping it up. Then you can get lazy and you just eat healthy food as it is rather than cutting it up. You know, I'll just eat a cucumber and I'll be fine for a while, have some peanuts and that's it. I won't go all out gourmet in my kitchen anymore, you know? 
So at the beginning, it takes a lot of effort. Uh, don't stress over how long it's going to take. Don't beat yourself up every time you mess up because you're going to mess up quite a bit. It's just all a part of the transitioning process. You mess up until eventually you start going out and creating more dishes so that you don't mess up. That's what starts happening. You start to learn how to catch yourself before you screw up. So if you know that you're going to eat meat tomorrow, instead of going to the store, buying some meat, go to the store, buy some things that can be used as a substitute, you know, buy yourself some dehydrated shiitake mushrooms or wild mushrooms and soak those within a blood orange mushroom courgette blended sauce. And when you soak those ingredients together with some red onions and some organic tomatoes, what begins to happen is those mushrooms that were dehydrated become very chewy and they taste like beef. So as long as you know what to do, and again, most meat is very salty because of the high fat content, so you just add some sea salt in there, okay? So as you start switching out those things, you're gonna become well adept as to figuring out how your body responds to certain things, therefore you'll always be able to substitute a craving for something that's actually healthy. Now, as you're transitioning, you cannot simply, maybe you can if you're out there and you're really cool, but I couldn't and I'm pretty sure others can't do this. You cannot go from a very terrible diet to an incredibly healthy diet without any oils, sugars or salts because you crave those things. So don't beat yourself up if you have to use sea salt and now the buzz online is that sea salt isn't healthy for you. You still need it. It's not going to kill you as fast as the other salts will. So use it while you're able to in order to transition until you can wean yourself off of the salt completely, okay? These are like dampeners to your addictions. And even though these dampeners aren't quite healthy for you, they're still healthier for you than the other ones, such as um, organic refined sugar, organic refined salt, organic saturated heated oils, which harbor acrylamide if you I'm, I'm going into I'm going into a food tangent. I need to stop doing that. Use dampeners. So go for the unrefined. Go for the cold pressed. Cold pressed oils are fine for you. They're okay. Okay, they're not going to kill you. Go for the salts. Sea salt if you like. And all of this will basically put you on a higher level, a higher vibration of physical well-being, so that once you've gotten to that plateau, you can then ascend those limits even further and start cutting out some other things, getting your body more and more clean, okay? So don't be too hard on yourself. Too many people are hard on themselves. They like to nitpick saying how you're not doing the right thing. You're always doing the right thing as long as you're progressing. That's it, okay? So I'm Ryan JC, Ryan James Crubber. This may take you a while. This may take you a year. This may take you two years. Honestly, it will only take you about a day if you know exactly what to do. Uh, head on over to my, uh, do I have my website? I do have my website. I have my website as well because I have my Instagram link to my website and I have photos posted on there. But besides the blogs that I have on my website regarding vegan dishes, you can also go over to my Facebook page, Ryan Cropper, the actual profile, not the page itself where I'm like this, bold. It's one where I'm like this, okay? Oh, and I have a blue background on that one too. Yeah, you can go over there, add me as a friend, or you can just click on my albums, they're made public anyway, and you'll see a bunch of the foods that I make for myself. So, you'll know that I'm not kidding around when I say I can make foods that substitute my favorite foods, such as Chinese food, lasagna, ice cream, chocolate. I actually made raw chocolate. Okay, I'm gonna stop bragging, but check it out. It, it's, it's doable, it's possible, you guys, you'll be fine. If you wanna be able to transition, you can. It shouldn't be something that you just sit on your thumbs and just think, I can't do anything. You shouldn't be immobilized at the thought of being healthy. The options are out there. I'm Ryan JC once again. Ryan James Cobber, this has been your potential regarding health and I'll speak to you all pretty soon. Peace.